Hey you, yes you, welcome. Welcome to this course I created. It's based upon the 13 goals for a witch that you see on the screen. Each time we meet, we will work on one of these 13 goals. In the previous seven videos, we covered know yourself, know your craft, learn and grow, apply knowledge with wisdom, achieve balance, keep your words in good order, and keep your thoughts in good order. Today we delve into number eight, celebrate life. Pagans understand deity, or the divine, the creator, the supreme being, to be manifest within nature, and recognize divinity as taking many forms, finding expression in goddesses as well as gods. Goddess worship is central to paganism. Pagans believe that nature is sacred and that the natural cycles of birth, growth and death observed in the world around us carry profoundly spiritual meanings. Human beings are seen as part of nature along with other animals, trees, stones, plants and everything else that is of this earth. A green witch is a naturalist, herbalist, wise woman, and a healer. She embraces the power of nature. She draws energy from the earth and the universe. She relies on natural objects like stones and gems to commune with the land of which she lives. She uses plants, flowers, oils, and herbs for healing. She calls on nature for guidance, and she respects every living being, no matter how small. She is also someone who works with the elements, the local land spirits and all things green. She is able to harness the energy of the natural sources around her by developing a close connection with local plants, trees and wildlife, as well as within the earth itself. She is part druid, part shaman. Let's start with the elements. In many modern day pagan belief systems, there is focus on the five elements, earth, air, fire, water, and spirit. The concept is hardly a new one. A Greek philosopher, Empedocles, is credited with the cosmogenic theory of the four elements being the root of all existing matter the four elements being earth, air, fire, and water. Earth. Connected to the north, the earth is considered the ultimate feminine element. The earth is fertile and stable, associated with the goddess. The planet itself is a ball of life, and as the wheel of the year turns, more on that next session, we can watch all aspects of life take place, birth, life, death, and finally rebirth. The earth is nurturing and stable, solid and firm, full of endurance and strength. In color correspondences, symbolic magical links that is, both green and brown connect to the earth. In tarot readings, earth is related to the suit of pentacles or coins. Air. Air is the element of the east, connected to the soul and the breath of life. If you're doing a working relating to communication, wisdom, or the powers of the wind, of the mind, sorry, air is the element to focus on. Air carries away your troubles, blows away strife, and carries positive thoughts to those who are far away. Air is associated with the colors yellow and white, and connects to the tarot suit of swords. Fire. Fire is purifying masculine energy associated with the South and connected to strong will and energy. Fire both creates and destroys and symbolizes the fertility of God. Fire can heal or harm. It can bring about new life or destroy the old and worn. In tarot, fire is connected to the wand suit and for color correspondences use red and orange for fire associations. 
water. Water is a feminine energy, highly connected with the aspects of the goddess. Used for healing, cleansing, purification, water is related to the West and associated with passion and emotion. In many spiritual paths, consecrated water plays a role. Holy water is just regular water with salt added to it and usually a blessing or invocation is said above it. As you may expect, water is associated with the color blue and the tarot suit of cup cards. Spirit, the fifth element, that of spirit, also called akasha or the ether. Spirit is a bridge between the physical and the spiritual. Let's look at crystals and stones. Many pagans use crystals and gemstones in workings because every stone is connected to some aspect of the human experience. Different traditions attribute various therapeutic and magical properties to each stone. This could be an entire course all of its own. The topic is so vast. Flowers, plants, herbs next. Herbs have been used for thousands of years, both medicinally and ritually. Every herb has its own unique characteristics, and these properties are what makes the plant special. Flowers are often connected with a variety of magical uses. Oils, by their nature, carry certain properties of the plant. Animals. In many modern pagan traditions, animal symbolism and even actual animals are incorporated into magical belief and practice. People have welcomed animals into their magical practice throughout the ages, as well as specific animals and their folklore and legends. Colors. Every color has its own symbolism. In many magical traditions, color magic is used because colors have certain associations. Numbers. Talking of correspondences, many pagan spiritual traditions incorporate the practice of numerology. The basic principles of numerology hold that numbers have a great deal of spiritual and magical significance. Some numbers are more potent and powerful than others, and combinations of numbers can be developed for magical use. Numbers also tie into planetary significance. Again, these topics all could be an entire course of its own. Celebrate life. As we conclude this session, I'd like to leave you with a few quotes. Success is a series of small wins. So recognize and appreciate all the little things around you and enjoy what life has to offer. Thank you and be well. And here's my contact info if you have any questions, concerns, complaints or compliments.